this particularly area of Lagos. Emergency officials are still combing the rubble to rescue those still trapped. Trader's cry out for support as fire raises several shops and stores at the GSM market in the Uguri Zabono State Capital. The central bank governor, Godi Kanifile, says closure of border has more gains for Nigeria, particularly in curbing insurgency, kidnapping, and trans border crime. And Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage challenges Boris Johnson to drop his European Union deal, describing it as a bad treaty. At least one person turned dead in the See, on ground, we are able to rescue four alive. However, operation is still ongoing. But you can see my team using a combined live duty um, equipment and delta. We want to ascertain that there is no living person in there. And that is why we are using the live duty equipment with our Delta, which is the sophisticated equipment to detect if there's any living person inside that building. We will be combining all these sophisticated um, instruments to achieve a good result. And we are looking at doing a, a sort of reconstruction in that place and um, redevelopment to they find those people as soon as possible. In the meantime, traders at the Gil Fraser GSM market in Maiduguri, Borno State, are counting their losses, with early reports showing 46 shops and several temporary cubicles raised by the fire. The Federal Service in Borno State says the composition of the market did not allow free passage for firefighters that responded to distress calls. A committee set up by the state government consisting of commissioners of relevant ministries, security personnel and the fire service officials are already investigating the cause of the disaster and the extent of damage. The cause of the fire at the GSM market, popularly known as Jabwa, is still a mystery to traders as everyone is left guessing what could have caused it. Owners of the affected shops watched helplessly as their investments went up in flames, unable to retrieve anything. Everything inside the shop, the phones, screens, and any other thing got burnt. We just came in and saw the ashes. It's unfortunate. And we're pleading for the government to help out. The federal firefighters want the government to ensure availability of access roads in the markets and public places going forward to enable ease of access for emergency workers to contain the spread of fires. We realize that the, our appliances cannot come into the market. So we devised and uh, created an access from Amadou Bello way so that we'll be able to arrest the fire from escalating into other uh, residential area and the uh, neighboring shops. Uh, at the end, uh, we were able to put out the fire in good time. In another part of the city is an ultra-modern GSM market built by the immediate past governor, Kashim Shetima, and commissioned by Vice President Yemio Shimbajo in May this year. The building remains under lock and has not been in use since its completion. The lawmaker representing the Meduguri Metropolitan Council says the House will work for the state government to see to the opening of the new complex and the renovation of the burnt market. When the governor returned from his trip, we are going to forward our complaint and he is going to intervene so that we will see how he is going to uh, 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 support them to bring back their businesses to life again. If they want to stay here, we will uh, plead to the governors if he can rebuild this place so that they can operate also from the two different uh, markets. <laughs> The market has been temporarily shut as the debris is evacuated in preparation for renovation and resumption of business activities. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefile, has been speaking on reactions trailing the country's economic policies. 
The second phase is unrelenting and his belief that border closure will yield positive results. The CBN boss says the closure should address some of Nigeria's security challenges within a period of two years. Ms. Abiyafili was speaking at the first convocation lecture of Edo State University, Yamu, where he also maintains that what some have described as the Apex Bank's unconventional policies have been useful in ensuring the stability and growth of the country's economy. Mohamed Adamu says over 66,000 officers will be deployed for election duties in the two states. He, however, warns that the force is already aware of politicians mobilizing thugs ahead of the elections, and anyone who tries to compromise the process will be arrested and prosecuted. The police chief was speaking at a joint security meeting with the Independent National Electoral Commission in Abuja. Many voters in Kogi and Bayelsa states are no doubt counting down to November the 16th, the scheduled date for the electorate to elect their governors and two federal lawmakers. However, security is a major concern as the date for this exercise draws closer. This is the reason why INEC is holding this security meeting with heads of security agencies in Abuja. There are already warning signals in the two states. Both are politically volatile. Elections have been severely disrupted in the past by violence. Our own risk assessment, which will be shared with the security agencies at this meeting, has identified some flashpoints. We are also concerned that thugs have been mobilized from within and outside the states with the aim of either influencing the elections or disrupting the process on behalf of partisan sponsors. 23 political parties, 2,548 polling units, and over 1.6 million registered voters are expected to participate in the Kogi election. In Bielsa State, 45 political parties will be on the ballot, and over 900,000 registered voters are expected to participate in the election. We are aware of this. The Inspector General of Police addresses the gathering on his security strategies. In Bielsa State, we are deploying about 31,041 personnel to cover the election. In Kuigi State, we are deploying about 35,200 personnel to cover the election. These personnel are to cover every terrain in the two states. We have done some trade analysis in the two states, and we have deployed some of the personnel in advance in the states to deal with those uh, trades before the day of the election. The Kogi and Bayosa elections are expected to provide INEC the opportunity to implement some of the recommendations arising from the conduct of the 2019 general elections. The Kano state government has approved a death penalty for anyone found guilty of kidnapping across the state. The governor, Abdullahi Gandaje, gave the order while receiving nine children abducted from Kano and rescued in Anambra State. He also inaugurated a commission to commence an inquiry into cases of missing persons from 2010 till date. Our correspondent, Idris Jabrin, reports. These children were separated from their parents years ago. They were kidnapped and sold in Onesha, the Anambra State capital, some for adoption and others for forced labor. The police say tracing the abducted children and arresting the suspects did not come easy. In an, in an effort by the Commissioner of Police to combat the menace of cases of missing child in Kano Metro Police, 
on, 20, on, on 12th September 2014 at about 15.00 hours, one fall on a 38 years of Iboyi State. One of the suspects takes on the activities leading to the arrest. Called the boy Umar Farouk. Actually, I don't know his name before. It was when we come here, and no one knows his real name. So we not get the boy. We take it to a nature, to a various house. So the day we take it to there, yeah. me and my madam. So we now see a place split. Sir? Yes, That is that uh, Umar Farouk. That yellow boy. Oh, yes. yes, on yet car. Ah, yes. the fate. Yes, he's the first person to we'll take it together with my, my, my madam. The Kano State Governor Abdullahi Kenduji says he is not happy with the development and has directed the review of the laws on kidnapping and a review of the penalty. I have already directed the State Minister of Justice to amend the relevant provision of the penal court law, laws of Kano State, that provides for the punishment for the offender of kidnapping from form of imprisonment to death penalty. The governor then ordered the distribution of one million naira to each of the pupils to cater for their well-being and further directed their parents to make sure they are enrolled in school within the state since education is now free and compulsory for all children. Already education is free and compulsory from basic to secondary education. So that one, there is no problem about that. You will enjoy free education in Kano State. And in addition to that, in addition to that, we promise to give you free university education. And also, in order to speed up your acclimatization, in order to speed up your integration into the society that you left many years ago, the Kano State Government has offered one million naira to each of the children. The Commission is expected to submit its reports to the State Government in 30 days, as this will give the State Government the needed direction to determine the necessary measures to put in place. Idris Jibrin. This two-story building collapses in the Ikoyi area of Lagos. Emergency officials are still combing the rubble to rescue those still trapped. Traders cry out for support as fire raises several shops and stores at the GSM market in Maiduguri, the Borno State capital. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emifiele insists closure of border has more gains for Nigeria, particularly in curbing insurgency, kidnapping and trans-border crime. And Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage challenges Boris Johnson to drop his European Union deal with uh, describing it as a bad treaty. The General of Police, uh, Mohamed Adamu, is assuring everyone that lessons learned at the 2019 retreat for senior police officers will be put to use to enhance internal security. The police chief was speaking at the end of a three-day deliberation in Victoria Island, Lagos. The event, however, came to a close with the presentation of awards to some individuals and organizations for their support to the force. It's been days of interaction and learning of new policing techniques for these very senior officers across the country. The Inspector General of Police explains that the session has been a painstaking one, and officers are more abreast with modern-day policing strategies. There are areas that we brought members of the public, they spoke to us, they told us you are not doing well in so-so-so areas, and in so-so-so areas you need improvement, and we've taken that on board, and we are going to work on that so as to improve for better performance. There were eight facilitators in all, touching on areas bordering on intelligence-led policing, crime data analysis, and community policing, among others. 
It was a more relaxed atmosphere than dinner to round up the three-day event when the Nigeria police recognized some individuals for their consistent support to the force. Of those honored include the governors of Lagos, Edo, and Anambra. As well as the chairman, CEO of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo, among others. agree the retreat has been a successful one, with lessons learned on achieving a more efficient policing in the country. Nigerians will be hoping to see how these lessons will put to use in the activities of the officers across the country. It's now from Ibrahim Marachi, the story out of Kwara State is that the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has detained 16 local government chairmen in that state who were recently suspended by Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak. The SAC Council chairman allegedly misappropriated 4 billion era loan and 10% of the state's internally generated revenue. The FCC said in a statement that the council chiefs, after securing the controversial loans, held a meeting and decided that 100 million era of it they shared among themselves. According to the EFCC, the council bosses, head of the 7th of February 2018, written to the Loring branch manager of Sterling Bank, that is, requesting a four billion naira loan in order to pay the salary arrears of the State Universal Basic Education Board teachers, local government staff, and local government pensioners, while the provisions for 100 million naira for council chairman were not appropriated in the request. The AFCC is also accusing them of diverting the monthly 10% of internally generated revenue for their personal use, which was paid directly into their personal accounts. Meanwhile, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, says he is renewing his commitment to fighting corruption in Nigeria. Briefing journalists at the EFCC office in Abuja, Mr. Magu says the commission is intensifying its war against cybercrime and will rehabilitate internet fraud stars to make them functional members of the society. He is urging the media to join the fight against corruption by promoting anti-corruption narratives. We warn that sister agencies such as the police, NGOs in the Northeast, and medical personnel who give fake medical certificates to corrupt individuals will also be investigated. It's not a question of um, going after people who are flashing cars, no, not really. Even if you're after flashing cars, we will look at it, we will do some background investigation and establish that uh, this uh, proceed of ill-gotten wealth. 
I will also do some background check and uh, see, monitor your financial activities and uh, some connections with the, with the internet from all the email uh, scam and, and uh, all, the, all that before we get the session. I mentioned that, that to you, that how can we get together and rehabilitate? Because these are small, small boys, university boys, who are still very young. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, I also mentioned the aspect of uh, 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 Moses of the Yahoo Yahoo Boys Association here. I remember I mentioned, I say I demanded for what strategies can we do to bring back these boys into society so that they can be better citizens, they can be more useful to, to this country. Yes, so, so these are some of the emphasis on that. Uh, it's not like we are uh, pursuing them. Uh, yes, we pursue them, and that's why we also give them the chance to go for plea bargain. And we make sure that the plea bargain process are very, very transparent. And then just for them to get the chance to go back. But it's like uh, uh, they are not uh, abiding with, you, with, this, with this, and, and uh, you are not helping us. Now we will extend our investigation to doctors who connive with criminals and give their fake yeah. medical report. Yes. I think we have to go after them. Yes. Yes. They, they must meet up. Uh, completely false. There is a way they can even get false report from abroad, from the hospital. You know, in the hospital you can just contact them, they will send you whatever you want. And uh, So I think we should also put them on the spot. So that this practice of uh, giving fake medical report will not stop. In another development, the Nigerian Union of Pensioners is asking the federal government to review the monthly pension of their members and pay a national minimum pension of 30,000 naira. The demand is coming a few weeks after the federal government finalized the minimum wage consequential adjustment negotiations with Workers' Union. The president of the Nigeria Union of Pensioners says the last time pensions were reviewed was 10 years ago. As some of his members still collect as low as 2,000 naira as their monthly pension. We are requesting for compliance with the stipulations in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended that pension will be reviewed every five years or when salary when salary salaries are reviewed whichever comes earlier and i've just mentioned that the salary pension pensions were reviewed last in 2010 at the state level there are pensioners receiving two thousand per month to do what with two thousand to buy tomato when this exercise started, labor requested for 65,000. We said, okay, fine. We'll request for 40,000 minimum. But with the dialogue and consultation and discussion, of which we are a part, when labor settled for 30,000 minimum, we also said 30,000 minimum, because whatever is good, for the goods is good for the Ganda because we go to the same market, gentlemen. We do not have the clout, we don't have the power like workers going on strike or that kind of thing. But we can plead and we are pleading and calling the attention to their responsibility of obeying the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You're watching the news at 10. When the news challenge is Boris Johnson. <laughs> Welcome back to the news. A leading solar mini grid solutions provider is contributing to the evolving grid energy sector in the country. The company's chief executive officer, Ifai Orajaka, pointed out the role of its partners and the acquired of state government in the success of the project, which will energize communities and create jobs. We're speaking at the commissioning of a power plant constructed and operated by GBE Projects Limited. A 
Akwabum community in Ona local government area of Akwabum State is one of the 12 communities to benefit from the first set of grants under the Rural Electrification Fund. The project has installed 306 solar panels with 5.5 kilometer distribution network across the country. There are 440 connections comprising residential and commercial buildings. At the commissioning ceremony, the executive director, Rural Electrification Fund of the Rural Electrification Agency, Dr. Sanusio Hiari, urges the people to maximize the benefits of the project by engaging in small businesses. It is important to know that as, we, as you begin to utilize electricity, there will be a boost in economic activities leading to greater investments in the future. I urge you all to use this electricity to grow your local economies, start new businesses, confident that you now have the reliable electricity to power shops, cold rooms, schools, and much more. The Chief Executive Officer, GVE Projects Limited, developers of the project, Ifanyo Radaka, gives details of the enterprise. What we have here is a 100 kilowatt PV solar mini grid system that is generating electricity from the sun and that will power over 400 households in Apia in Ababum community. The member representing our nasty constituency in the State House of Assembly, Mr. Ense Sien, expressed appreciation for the project, noting that it will boost the economy of the area. We thank uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for approving funds uh, to the Rural Education uh, Agency to come and do this uh, uh, wonderful work. And we thank also the governor of the state uh, who had given the noble environment and had done the access road for the people uh, to, to have road to access this community. The project was completed within six months. It is the new acting managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, the NDBC, Joy Nunez says the commission will impact all rural communities spread across the Niger Delta region. Mrs. Nunez says her team will pursue the developmental program of President Amadou Buhari. It's a beehive of activity at the headquarters of the Niger Delta Development Commission in Port Harcourt River State. As management and staff of the commission welcome the interim new acting managing director, Dr. Joy Nunez, and her team. Their first port of call is the office of the outgoing MD, Dr. Kwaganga Enya, for the official handover ceremony to the three man management committee. After the handover, Dr. Enya leads the new acting managing director, the acting executive director of project, Dr. Cairo Jubo, and the acting executive director of finance and administration, Chief Iban Abasia Tang, to the conference room to meet with the staff of the commission. From the Dr. Enya urges the directors and staff of the commission to cooperate with the new management committee to reposition the image of the agency by adhering to its corporate culture. I urge the directors and the various directors, departments, and units to cooperate with this team so that all the negative news. For the new acting managing director, she's delighted and appreciative of the president's confidence in her to lead the agency. She says that there will be no compromises in her assignment and promises to take the developmental programs of the president to the rural areas where every village will feel the impact of their intervention. I want to assure everyone in the region, Mr. President, the Honorable Minister, that every village, every village 